Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about the binomial distribution. Uh, you should have by now learned about basic probability principles and concepts as well as random variables. You learned in random variables that there are two distinct types of random variables. There are discrete and continuous random variables. These represent entire families uh, or categories of random variables. Underneath each of those, discrete and continuous that is, there is a host of distributions of random variables. Okay, so under the umbrella of discrete random variables, remember these were either, these are random variables that took either finite possible values or countably infinite. Okay, under the umbrella of discrete random variables, one of the most important distributions is the binomial distribution, okay, or the binomial random variable. So let's very quickly go through these slides on the binomial random variable and the binomial distribution. Okay, so it's a specific type of discrete probability distribution. Uh, it how do you identify or even think to uh, use this distribution? Well, in the real world where things don't come kind of labeled and you have to decide uh, what kind of model you want to use to represent some natural phenomena that you're seeing out in the world, um, these are some markers that you could look for to come to the conclusion that a binomial random variable is appropriate okay so a binomial experiment is this uh, we're gonna we're gonna call this a binomial experiment it's gonna consist of these four items we essentially consists of n independent Bernoulli trials so just let n be the fixed number of trials okay so that's the first thing we have a fixed number of trials of some experiment each of those trials results in one of two possibilities generically we're going to call those either success or failure in context they could mean anything any two possibilities okay the outcomes of the different trials are independent of one another that's very important okay so what happened on the first trial has no bearing on the second third fourth nth trial and the probability of success on any one of these trials is fixed at P. We'll call it P. So the two symbols here we have specifically for the binomial distribution are N and P. They're very important values that we need in order to answer any kind of probability question. Um, N is the fixed number of trials. P is the probability of success on any given one of those trials, okay? And remember, all these trials are independent. All right, so let's move forward. So we're going to define the binomial random variable as follows. Let's use X, right? And we use capital to specify it's a random variable. X is the number of successes out of a fixed number of trials. So you're going to do a fixed number of trials of these, of these trials, and you're going to end up with a certain number of successes. You can have zero successes all the way on up to n successes, all of them being successful. Okay, And we've already talked about what these two mean. By the way, these two are called the parameters of the binomial distribution. Okay. And as you learned in the lecture on random variables, random variables uh, can be specified with a probability distrib uh, a function called the probability mass function. A discrete random variable can be specified with something called a probability mass function, PMF. Okay, and what that does is it gives you the probability at every particular value that the random variable can take. So in our case, x can be 0, 1, all the way on up to whatever n is. 
So we need a function that's going to give us the probability that x equals 1. The probability, 0 rather, the probability that x equals 1, all the way on up to the probability that x equals n. Okay, so you can express this function in various ways. It turns out with the binomial random variable, the most efficient way to express it is with this equation here. Okay, this is red, n choose x times p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x. And what this gives you is the probability that x takes a particular value. And we know the possible values are from 0 to n discrete. Okay? Let's keep going. So here's a little exercise of just working with the binomial coefficient, this bit. So I read this as n choose x. What does that tell you? Well, you should have been initiated to this before, but in case you're not, very quickly a review with a problem here. How many ways can I choose five students from a group of 30? So I have 30 students and I want to choose randomly five of them. How many ways can I do that? Or how many possibilities are there? Well, turns out there's a formulaic way of answering this question. You don't have to start listing it all out. Okay, notationally we write 30, choose 5. That's how that's read. Another way to write this equivalently is with this notation. I prefer the, the former, but this is also used in some texts. 30, choose 5. And the way you compute this is by taking... 30 factorial over 5 factorial times 30 minus 5 factorial, okay? And once you compute this, you'll see that this is a very large number. In fact, let me get you that answer. The answer is 142,506 possibilities. That's a very large number considering how small these two numbers are, okay? So combinations can get pretty large pretty quick, okay? All right, so that is isolating just the binomial coefficient part of the binomial PMF, all right? By the way, these are equivalent notations when you're dealing with discrete random variables. You can write probability of x equals x like this or just like this. Only for this alternative is only applicable for discrete, which is what we're talking about today. All right, so a little exercise in notation here. What if I don't want to find the probability of a particular value, but a range of values? Say, what's the probability that x is less than or equal to some integer k? Well, I need to sum up all the probabilities from 0 up to and including k. Why? Because this is less than or equal to. So I need to include the k and I need to apply the PMF to each of those possibilities. Summing them all up will give me the result that I'm looking for. Okay? Now, what if I asked you, what's the probability that x is greater than k? Notice not greater than or equal to. Well, you want to start one above k. So I start the summation at k plus one, and I go all the way on up to the maximum value that x can take. Remember, x is binomial today. So that is n, obviously. So I go from k plus one to n, again, summing up each of those, putting them through the probability mass function provided on the previous slide, okay? An alternative way, if you remember some of your um, fundamental probability from that lecture, I can get the probability that x is greater than or equal to uh, greater than k by doing 1 minus the complement of x greater than k, which is x less than or equal to k. All right? So that's just using a little trickery. If I spent a lot of time to answer this question and then I got this question, I don't need to spend a lot of time again to answer it if I recognize that this guy and this guy are complements. What is a complement? Remember, this is, this is an event, okay, that is not the other event. So if A is, if this is A, then it turned out that this is 
a complement. It includes everything else, okay, and nothing of the former, okay? You could also read this as A, not A. So if you recognize that, then you don't have to do a lot of work here, and you can answer this very quickly using that relationship. Okay, moving along. Here is a more full-fledged exercise, which I'll pause and let you work on, and then we'll come back and look at the, look at the re result. Okay? Okay, so if you worked through the problem, you got a second, you paused it hopefully, and you gave it a shot. First off, you see that X or Y, whatever you want to call it, the number out of 12 patients that actually contract the disease is a random variable. We don't know what it's going to be. It could be none of them. It could be one of them. It could be all 12 of them and two, three, four, everything in between. So N is, t so, uh, oh, and also the patients have nothing to do with each other, so they're independent. There's a fixed number of them, 12. The probability of any one of them getting the disease, quote unquote success in our case, is 0.6 for each. And that doesn't change from person to person. That is, are all the markers of a binomial experiment, okay? So then we're asked, what's the probability that exactly eight of them contract the disease. So then your job is to get the probability that X equals eight. Using the PMF, we get 0.2128, okay? And then part B says, what's the probability that X is between four and seven, or between four and seven inclusively contract the disease? So there we have some more work to do because we have to take the summation from four to seven. So all that means is you have to do what you did for part A, but for four, five, six, seven, and add them all up, which is what I've done here, and the answer is 0.547, okay? Finally, the mean and expected value, uh, well, mean slash expected value, and variance and standard deviation of a binomial random variable. These are very easy to compute compared to just any arbitrary discrete random variable, the expected value or mean of a binomial random variable, which is what we're talking about right here, is simply n times p. And n and p are as I've defined them in this lecture. The variance of a binomial random variable is simply n times p times 1 minus p. By the way, 1 minus p is the probability of failure, because p is the probability of success, and there's only two outcomes, right? Um, and also, obviously, remember that the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So you can get the standard deviation by taking the square root of this guy, okay? Now let's just try, I'll pause and try to get the mean or expected value and the variance of the number of contra uh, patients contracting the disease. Okay, so this is very simple. So hopefully you paused and gave it a shot. So mu of x, that's one of the symbols that you can use, alternative notation. Sometimes one is more useful than the other. Is simply n times p, so it's 12 times 0.6, okay? And the variance, Careful, if I ask for variance, give me variance. If I ask for standard deviation, give me standard deviation. Take the square root. So it's simply n times p times 1 minus p, which is 0.4. Okay? So let's quickly compute these numbers and so you can confirm that you've got the right results. So, uh, so we got 12 times 0 0.6. 7.2 is the mean. And then we have 12 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4, and 2.88 is the variance. Okay, so that is the binomial distribution in a nutshell. Again, if the, the, the talk of complements, random variables, discrete versus continuous, et cetera, et cetera, was uh, kind of a little rusty for you, you need to go back and uh, brush up on those topics um before you can fully appreciate 
uh, the binomial distribution presentation here. Okay, so till next time, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.